What is going on everyone? Welcome to another Python with finance tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is cocaine. So people in the finance industry love to engage in it, but it can end your career in a heartbeat if you're not careful. By cocaine, I mean leverage. So coming over here, we've got this 86.4% return. And what people think sometimes is, well, shoot, what if I, okay, let's say we're investing with $10,000 here and we've got this 86.4% from start to finish. So people start to think that, oh, well, if I had $20,000, so if I could get someone to just loan me $10,000, I would also make 86.4% on that money. So I would just double my returns, right? What could go wrong? So they do that and uh, they find out that leverage doesn't quite work that way uh, or at least not in the way that they thought. So uh, the way leverage works generally is you, you've got, you know, you're, you've got an exchange or a, you know, an institution or a brokerage that you're using and you have to sign up for, to use leverage. Uh, so it's, a leverage is like a loan because they're going to loan you X times the amount of funds you have. Now there's a little difference. Um, you know, you've got, you know, brokerage accounts leverage, and you can usually get like one times, two times, three times. So one times is what everyone gets. And then sometimes you can sign up for two or three times. Pretty rare I, that I've seen anything greater than that. Uh, but like before, like the mortgage crisis, for example, that, I mean, banks and stuff like pr proprietary traders back then were trading with like 20 times leverage. I mean, it was absurd. And nowadays people are trading more between like one and five. Okay. Uh, but people are doing it and you know, as time goes on that, that leverage, it just keeps creeping up because it's so addictive and while things are good, it's good. But when they're not, it's really bad. So, uh, for example, this is the strategy. We'll just view the code really quick. This is with no leverage. Okay. So each, uh, position is 0.11, which is 11%. Uh, and there's, you know, uh, let's see how many companies do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, right. So only nine companies. So we're not leveraged, right? So you know, max investments, 99% leverage. In theory, obviously we could short a company, and then if we're shorting it and losing enough money, it'll probably add a little bit to leverage, but still one leverage. Then we move right along, and so we move to this next uh, next version of this. And oh, going back over here, 32.3% drawdown, 86.4. Coming over here, 134.6. Uh, so we do beat the market here, 56.99% drawdown. And then we'll just view the code really quick here. This is the same exact strategy, only we're using basically two times leverage. We can also hover over here to see our leverage here is, you know, 1.97, but basically two. Okay, so here we go. We've got two leverage. Uh, only really in the very beginning did we actually lose money that we started with. And then the rest of the time, we're still above, you know, this, the starting point line, but we still did wind up with that 56.99% drawdown. So that's with two times leverage. So then someone might get the bright idea. Well, we still have room for one more multiple here. What could go wrong? So we move on to three times leverage. Yikes. So we get to this point and we can see here the drawdown was quite significant. Again, now we're back. We're, we've lost money from the start again at this point. We've lost money from the start at this point as well. And it turns out our total returns overall were less than our two times leverage, which just baffles people. But that's what happens. Okay, so we'll just look at the code real quick. Right, the only change here is this 0.33. That's it. And so everything else remains the same, yet this strategy performed way worse uh, with even more leverage. So it's not like if you, if you have a strategy that performs really well, just apply some leverage and earn more money. That's not how it works. So moving along, we've got the long short. Uh, if you remember, this one's like an 84% without any leverage. So we apply some leverage and now we've got, we're up to 140.4. So checking, uh, the code here, come down, right? This is two times leverage. So first of all, Again, as we keep seeing, the addition of leverage raises basically everything quite a bit, uh, but it does not raise the returns by two. It just doesn't. It's not like it's a multiple here of earnings. Uh, so we've got that, and that was two times leverage. Then here we go to three times leverage, I believe, or this might be four. Let's check it real quick. Right, okay, so this is four times leverage. 
Uh, and I just stopped the uh, the entire thing at this point because you can see where like leverage is spiking here. Like this is like negative 185 leverage. Hey, Harrison, what happened there? Well, what happened was we actually, our algorithm passed minus 100. So our funds were in the negatives. And then the fact that we were still making trades meant leverage was just asinine. We wouldn't have made it past here. Okay. At this point, we would have been like, yay, our strategy is working good. And then we'd be like, oh no. And then bam, we're done. And what happens too is like looking, let's look at this one. The problem at this point and this point and this point is when you're shorting or when you have leverage at any point, your brokerage can be like, hey, we want our money back and they'll take their money from you and you might wind up stuck in this position. So they're going to be, they're going to be paid in full, but you're going to be that minus 33.75%. So that's a lot of money that you're going to be out of. Uh, and so just keep that in mind. So here we can see where well, finally leverage goes awry. And uh, which makes sense because drawdown at this point, 56.79. Don't know what you were thinking doubling leverage at that point. But it, but still, I can see the how, why you might think it's okay. Because up to that point, really, besides right initially, you hadn't crossed over the zero line at all. So thinking that you're going to run out of money might not have been something you thought was even going to occur. Now, so that's leverage in your account. The next thing I want to talk about is leveraged ETFs. So some people will play with leveraged ETFs. So here's an example of a leveraged, actually, this is a couple leveraged ETFs. So let's view the code here. Uh, what we're doing here is we're investing in two, two of these leveraged ETFs. One is DRN and one is SSO. The SSO is, this is an incorrect comment. I just added these in here and this comment remained. Uh, DRN is for the housing market. That's leveraged at three times. And then the SSO is the S&P 500. I believe it's 2X leverage. I, I can't remember, honestly. But both of these are leveraged ETFs. So this would be the performance of those ETFs uh, over the course. They came out and like one of them stuck to 2010. So this is the furthest back we can really go. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, we're doing really good. But of course, we got this massive drawdown right here from up here all the way down to here. Uh, but we're still beating the market pretty significantly here. So, And this is a buy and hold type of situation. Now, when it comes to leverage, most people are kind of in agreement that you never like hold leverage. Okay, you take leverage and you trade leverage, like day trade leverage. You don't like, you just don't hold it. Okay, but this is an example of us day trading leverage. Pretty well, it's not day trading, but we're we are engaging in a lot of trades, uh, and and we're trading like a simple moving average crossover here. Uh, that's simple stuff, you know. Like that should really that should underperform the market because it's a momentum strategy. It's gonna it's gonna lag the market, but in theory, you should make money on those gaps. But having this much drawdown, I mean, that's that's pretty scary. So I mean, you might be like, well, okay, okay, okay. What we'll do is let's take 3x leverage, all right, and then let's like make the moving averages smaller. Okay, so we'll do 10 and 50, okay? We'll do something like that. And so we could run that. And we're still, we're going to start May 30th, 2002, but we'll see how this strategy does. So this should be a little faster acting. So it's like in and out, in and out. But the problem with even a fast acting moving average is that it's going to be really fast at making mistakes too. And there we go. Yeah, we just went bust. <laughs> right? It didn't take us very long to end that. Even though that 50 or 5 and 20, what did we even use? I can't even remember. No, 10 and 50. Even though that theoretically should like kind of scrape a little bit of money here and there, but not, you know, really make that much money. Uh, even though that's like a viable idea, it just doesn't work. Just because you apply leverage, it just doesn't multiply your earnings. Okay. So... Anyway, long story short, leverage is dangerous, but there are some scenarios where you can apply leverage and actually wind up doing pretty good, uh, but you do you just have to be so careful uh, when it comes to uh, using leverage. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Just wanted to cover leverage. I see people using leverage a lot on Quantopian, and sometimes I accidentally use it, and I don't mean to. Uh, and in, in really, really small doses, leverage can be okay, but it's just too easy to, to mess up with leverage. Uh, and a lot of people might not even have access to leverage, but with like ETFs and stuff, a lot of times you can get in on them, uh, no problem. And then you could 
apply leverage to the leverage ETF. And now you're like three times whatever your leverage is. And so people just go crazy like that. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, um, where's that long short that we're running right now? I think that's this one. All right. So anyways, uh, that's it. Questions, comments below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.